recording now. And so, um, so we're going to cover that. We're going to cover a couple of things. The buy and sell process, right? When you have a client who wants to sell a property so they can buy another property, okay? So that's that situation there. It's it's not difficult, but it, it's 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 a process, right? And if you don't coordinate it properly, it can it can get pretty stressful and, and it can get pretty complicated. But the coordination, hey, you know, nothing is set in stone. It, it doesn't always work out perfectly, but you just do your best to always prepare for every situation, you know, or the most common situations. So I'll cover that and I'll cover CMAs, uh, which is basically the comparative market analysis, which is something you do for listings at either way. So we'll, we'll cover that whole process. I also set up a checklist when I don't have a checklist for that type of process. So I have sent out several emails for you guys with videos. Now you have to understand when I do Chime training, Chime is our CRM. And I'm when I go into these accounts and these profiles, it's showing people's like names and phone numbers and emails. If I take those videos that I do training on and I put it on YouTube as a, as a public video, uh, YouTube will remove it for that reason, because it's showing people's personal information. So, um, so therefore, I, I have to share those with you guys privately. So you guys should have received invitations for at least, I think it was like at least four or five different videos that I did specifically on the script, the short script training, where I was going back and forth with the, with, with the CRM, kind of showing some information and going back to the script. If you didn't receive those, if you can't get access to those, just let me know and then we'll figure something out, okay? But um, you should have access to those. Plus, I sent you a bunch of other videos too. I just stayed up one the other night, like all all night, just uh, recording videos. And so um, I've been trying to get all those to you guys. I have uh, several more to, to get to you guys as well, so I'll get those to you as well. So just uh, a couple of notes on that. You should have received all that stuff. So. Let's go ahead and do a couple of things here. I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. I'm going to hop on to the MLS and just start pulling some information on these, uh, on how to do a CMA. And then we'll start talking about the buy and sell process there. Let me see. And so I know some of you guys are up in Denver. Some of us are down here in Colorado Springs. So I'm just gonna just cover that's the basically the the matrix for for Denver and for Colorado Springs are basically the same thing. You know, there's some differences in the format and how they present the information, but how to how to actually look up the information is pretty much almost identical, you know. You'll notice some differences, but these differences aren't significant. All right, so. I'm here on, this is for the PPAR MLS. Okay, so here we are, right? So let's, um, I'm just gonna set up an example for a house that just got under contract with my clients up in Aurora. Actually, now I'll do one here in Springs. So um, if you're gonna be doing a CMA, the way I like to do it is, I like to use this. Now, do you have other tools? Yes, absolutely. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the whole process of how I like to look at look it up. So I'm actually gonna stick with the property and obviously here in the springs since I'm in the springs, but I always end up looking up Zillow and um, and I just kind of get an idea of what Zillow has has for the for the price of the home. You know, it gives you an idea. It's not it's not gonna be exact. There it is. This is my old property. I, I we sold this back in twenty at the end of twenty twenty two or at the end of twenty twenty one. And so look, Zillow right here, Zestimate, right? They call it a Zestimate, which is whatever, lame. But anyways, they say four eighty. Now they just all they're doing really is they're going off of an algorithm that they have and they, they pull information. So this is four eighty. We sold it for four eighty back in. It says right here, twelve zero two twenty twenty one. Right. And so I like this. It just gives you an idea of what the house is worth. Right now, 
it's just an idea. This is not exactly what it's worth. The truth is when you run a CMA, you're not getting the exact value of the property. If you actually look down here on Zillow, you see this, this estimate range, it's saying 456 to 504. So it gives you a range as well. We also pick up a range. This range here is almost $50,000. That's kind of a big range, okay? In my opinion, like 50, that's a, that's a pretty big range. Now, it get, you get a better idea of where the range is depending on the quality of the home. So you can look at the pictures of the home, see if they have updated kitchen, restrooms. Those are the main things that give value to the home, right? And, the, and then you can kind of maybe see, okay, it's on the higher end, it's on the lower end, depending on the quality of the home. Now, again, we still want to pull a CMA, do our own CMA because we want to get an idea of what this house is worth based on the data that we see, right? Just because Zillow says that it doesn't actually mean that it's exact. It may be around that range, but it doesn't mean that it's exact. So what I do is this, is that I, I look at the property on the M, on the MLS, right? So here it is. And so that's what I just, I pull it up because I want the information, like the information I want is obviously the address and then how many bedrooms, bathrooms, the size of the garage, the square footage, it's all right here, right? And so all I, I, what I end up doing is I right click on the on the tab and I duplicate. So I duplicate this and then I just go to a search. So if you see right here, I'm going to search residential, res, residential default search. And it takes me to this right here. So you can create your own searches here on directly on the on the matrix. Right. And so it has all this information here. Right. So, again, I don't need to fill out all this information. I just fill out some of the information. So I always start up right here on the top left corner, right? And then I work my way down. Now, am I going to fill out every piece of information? No, I'm not. It just needs some information. But right here, like I'm going to check some of the ones that, that I need on this. So what I do is I leave the active because I do want to see what's what's active. Uh, under contract showing and pending, I put those as well. But the most important ones are the sold ones, all right? So the one right here, it says sold. And I usually go out 90 days. I don't like going out any more than 90 days. If I have to go more, then I'd go about 100 days, maybe 110 days. This is just going back three months to see what has been, what has sold for that, with, uh, that's very similar to this property, all right? So then what I do here, is I copy and paste, copy this, the address here, go back and I paste it right up here, right? You'll see it has a pop-up like this. Did you mean, and this it gives you the address that needs to pop up. You need to click it. You know, it's selected. Once this little red spot right here says map area selected, you know, it's selected when it does that. Now, okay, I have to kind of inform you guys on a couple of things. These appraisers are getting more and more tight when it comes down to their to their methods. All right. An appraiser is a licensed a licensed individual that can value the home and give us an exact value of that home. Okay. By using the methods that they know, using the methods that they use and all that stuff. So these methods are necessarily um clear to us exactly what, what methods they're using. Some are more lenient than others. The whole appraisal process is subjective, meaning that they're, if they're having a bad day, they may end up not being so uh, lenient on the price. If they're having a great day, they may just be like, hey, you know, this price looks good. I'm going to just stick with it. So it really depends. And so And it's something that we really have no control over. All right. We have very little control. They, if say, for instance, you're on a con contract for $500,000 and it appraises for say 490, you get, you're going to have to figure out what's going to happen there, you know, because the, the contract price says 500,000, but the, the appraiser is saying it's valued at 490. The lender cannot give the buyer more than what it's valued at. So the lender could only give a $490,000 loan for this house, but we're under contract for $500,000. So what's going to happen with the $10,000?
a couple of things can happen. One thing can happen is that the seller just agrees to just settle with 490. That's one thing. The other thing that can happen is that the buyer can pay the difference, $10,000. That's cash they need to pay, by the way, right? Or they can settle with the, with the price somewhere in between, right? Or the seller can cancel the contract in that particular situation. They can. Um, so what I've seen usually is that the seller does settle. Because if I'm, a, if I'm on the buy side, all I say is that, well, my buyer doesn't have the cash to pay the difference. You know, they're already putting the down payment. They're paying closing costs. Like, and so that's usually what happens there. Now, have I ever seen it canceled? The truth is I haven't, but it's just, it can happen, you know? So when you're listing these houses, you don't want to list it way more than what you think it's valued. Okay. So you, you really want to do a good CMA to get, figure out what, where, where this house is valued at. Um, me and Kia had a situation. We went under contract at 408. The house was valued at 405. I thought it was going to be easy. I'm like, oh, that's easy. That's $3,000 difference, right? Let's give them some comps in there. Nope. That shit was a pain in the ass. They were, had, they, were, they restricted us significantly. I mean, like, it was crazy. We can only go a one mile radius from where the house was. Um, they had the, I think it was, the, um, some other some other stuff since he had some houses above grade and some I'm sorry some rooms above grade and some rooms below grade they they knocked us points off of that and a bunch of other things so it was it was pretty intense it's like what the heck's going on because it, it used to be easy now it's getting more intense so I just wanted to kind of clarify that because when you're doing the running the CMA I say be as conservative as you possibly can that's that's the best way to approach it because that's how these these um, appraisers are going to approach the the value of the home they're going to be conservative with their methods and it's just, it's probably because the the market has been compressing a little bit not too much of course but they're just going to be more strict with their ways and so we should be as well and so look I, i'm comfortable going two and a half miles radius from the house this is where you put it right here this is within 2.5 this is 2.5 miles these guys weren't going more than a mile. Now, I don't understand why that is because I think um, from what I've learned is that they can go up to eight miles radius from the house, right? And so maybe we'll try to keep it at two miles and we'll go from there. I'll reduce it to one mile, but let's keep it, let's keep it within two miles. Um, I know where this house is pretty much a mile radius you have a bunch of houses in there but i'm not sure what, what we'll get from there so we'll just do it at two miles and we'll go and we can increase it or decrease decrease it from there to see where it goes so that's what i do there i continue down here i go to property type i look for single family home because that's a single family home so i highlight that and then i i jump across to the other side i don't really pay attention to anything in the middle really anything in, in here i don't really care for much of anything in here that's not really going to change I, I, only the obviously the the address right so i got the active check just i want to see what's active and on uh, what prices are at under contract and showing pending are both you know under contract pending properties in that area and then sold right so far if you if i look in the bottom down here i have 216 results right which is a lot i'm at a two mile radius and i have 216 results that's that's crazy. I'm not sure if there's something broken, but that's what it's saying, right? Um, anyways, that's going to reduce significantly when I start putting everything else. So number of bedrooms. Number of bedrooms. This has a five-bedroom. Now, when it, when you get it to like five, six, seven-bedroom houses, um, I I don't – you're going to notice that you're not going to have a lot. Like I'm going to put five bedrooms. If I put five bedrooms there, it drops down to 45. And this one has three bathrooms. I put three bathrooms, and it drops down to 24. Right. But usually what happens is that if I didn't have a high number here, 24, I would adjust the, the bedrooms to four to five bedrooms. Right. That's what I would do. Now it goes up to 63. You see that? Because the bedrooms, I can always add value to a house that has a four bedroom. I can add another maybe $10,000 to the price, which would then pretty much, um, increase the value of the home if it had a five bedroom that, that would probably be right around where it should be so 
Right now, I'll leave it as five and I'll see what, how the results turn out because I still need to put everything else. It's a two car garage and it was attached, right? So you see how it dropped down to nine now? Now, the year that it was built, let me check out the year it was built. It was built in 2001. So the rule of thumb with this, I just, I usually just go plus and minus 10 years. Maybe I'll go plus and minus 15 years. You know, if I have to really stretch it, I'll go plus and minus, you know, maybe a, at the, no more than 20 years. But let's just do plus and minus 10 years. I'll just do 1990 to, uh, to 2010, right? And we'll, we'll adjust from there. Look, I have six now, right? Six matches is what I'm saying now. Square footage. So the square footage is 20, 25, 36. So the other rule of thumb here, and this is finished. So if you want to really look at this, look at the square footage right here. You have total square footage and then you have finished square footage, right? So the, the utility room wasn't finished. That's why you have basically a, a 100 square foot difference there, right? It's a little less actually. So um, I'm, I'm just gonna go off of 2,500. Basically, I'm gonna say 2,500 is finished and I'll go plus and minus 200 square feet. You can go plus and minus more, but then we'll go off of that. So if I go plus and minus 200 square feet, I'm between 20, 2,300 and 2,700 square feet. And I put it for both total and I put it also for finished, okay? Because you may have a house that's 2,700 20, 2, square feet or 2,500 square feet, but you may, but it may be finished at 2,000 square feet. Maybe the basement isn't finished, and there's a thousand square feet in the in the basement. So, or maybe 500 square feet in the basement or whatever. And so that's why I do uh, both total square feet and finish, so I can capture those houses. Look, now I'm down to five, right? And so that's all the information I put in there. I don't put anything else really, you know, that is all I really care about, right? And I have five matches right now. We'll, we'll look at the results right now, but let me just kind of uh, repeat this stuff really quick. So I just leave active just to see what's what's actually in the market for sale, what price they're at. And I, I click on under contract showing and, and pending. Under contract showing is the same thing as pending, but they're just they're still they're still allowing um, for for showings. You can still show the property even though it's under contract. And the reason they do this is because if the if your client likes it, you can still submit an offer, but it just becomes a backup offer. In the case the current buyers don't close on the house, don't buy the house for whatever reason, they already have backup offers to look at, and so the backup offers are good. They work. And then sold, right? And so, and I go out, like when it comes down to pending, it doesn't really matter how many days I go out. But for sold, I just, I don't like going out more than 90 days. And if I, if I have to increase, like say for instance, I only have five, we go up to a hundred right now, a hundred days. It didn't really change anything. I still have five matches, right? And so I'll leave it like that. Single, whatever type of property is, if it's a condo, if it's a single family home, townhouse, it's all right here, you know? And then you have total bedrooms, total bathrooms, garage, if it's attached, and then year built, total square footage. And that's pretty much all. And then of course the address up here with the with the with the radius around around the property. So that's that right there. Now let's just look at the results. I just go down here, it says results right here. And then I just click on that. Again, this setup here for uh, for RE Colorado is pretty much the same as well. So let's see what we got. So we got five houses, three closed, one active, one pending. Okay. And so what we can look at here is that I look at the price and I just click on this price to kind of adjust it from highest to lowest. So let's look at the highest here. 455 is the highest, the lowest is 425, right? Look, they're all five bedrooms. They're all three bathrooms. They're all two car garages. The square footage, it's all right around 2,500 square feet. You have 2410, 2327, 2592, 2488, 2480. And look at the distance. They're, like Most of these are, on, are within a mile 
0 0.5 miles, 0 0.4 miles, 1.7 miles, 0 0.4 miles, and 1.4 miles, right? And so this is two miles. Imagine if I only did one mile, I would only have one, two, three houses to work off of, right? That's why it's ridiculous when they, when they, when they uh, had us keeping it within a mile from that house that we were selling. It was just, it was, it was insane. But um, let's, the price here, it's nowhere near a 480, right? 450, 455, that's what I'm seeing. Now, I look at all this data here, and I'm all right, cool. It gives me an idea. Look at, on the high 455, on the low 425, right? Now, now let's look at the, let's look at the houses, right? Let's look at the, the, these homes, let's look at the pictures. Hopefully they do, have, they, they do have pictures. So under MLS, I just click on the MLS number and it opens it opens it up for me. And then I'll just bring this up here. Actually, I'll do it this way so we can all see it. So here's the house, right? So, all right, it's a ranch style home, probably has a basement. That's the backyard, cute little backyard. Now, when it comes down to landscaping and the yard and everything, it doesn't really add much value to the home, okay? It's it's not a significant amount of value that it brings to the home. You really want to focus more on the interior. They have a lot of pictures of the, of the backyard, okay? It's a nice backyard. All right, so you walk in. You have, th this is actual wood flooring. Looks like it was just recently finished and uh, like sand and stain. The, the paint looks fresh as well. So here it is. The railing is nice. There's your fireplace. That stone all around the fireplace is nice too. It's the original fireplace for sure. So you have that open concept with the kitchen, living room, dining area, bolted ceilings. So here's your kitchen. Um, it looks like you have the backsplash there. I'm pretty sure that's tile. It looks like you have either quartz or granite countertop. Cabinets. I don't think they're brand new. I think they painted them, but I don't think they're brand new cabinets. Or they may be. I can't tell from the pictures. They probably are. And then you get into the bedrooms. This is the, You're still on the main floor here. So here is, that might be the master bedroom. There it is, master bedroom, walk-in closet, the bathroom. Looks like you have vinyl flooring in the bathroom there. This is the original uh, vanity. For sure you can tell. <sighs> Because of that color, this is probably the original flooring too, right? It was just taken care of. And you look at the shower tile, it's also the original. So that's, that was just one picture of, of this restroom here, right? Not a very big master bed uh, restroom, by the way, all right? Uh, and so then you have another bath, uh, bedroom and another bedroom, right? So you have, it looks like you have three bedrooms upstairs. And then you have another full restroom upstairs as well. Again, original vanity. It's in good shape. It's not falling apart or anything. And also original tile from, from the shower. And it looks like they, they painted it with a, some white epoxy. And then you have the basement. Huge basement, of course. A lot of space down there. It looks like you have another restroom. That restroom looks more updated. Should have a picture of it soon. And then, wow, okay. These are blurry pictures. You have, there's your laundry. And here's the restroom down here. So this restroom is updated. This is nice. The vanity is new, so is a mirror, light fixture, the tile with the accent on the shower, really nice. And then you have ceramic tile on the flooring too, right? At least from these pictures, it looks good. How is the quality? I can't really tell. These pictures aren't really that clear. And there's a camera on the mirror. <laughs> Anyways, but then you have a bedroom down there and another bedroom down there. Okay, so those are your five, five bedrooms and there's your two-car garage. So when it comes down to the size of this property, it's a good size, but I know for a fact, if I go to this house here and I look at the pictures here, um, you're going to notice that the master bedroom is bigger. And I know because I lived in this house, right? So that's the, so this is, this is a, a quad, like a four level house. So this is where the kitchen and the dining and the living room area is. So the kitchen's on the other side of that wall. And then, so that's where all that is. And then here's your, your kitchen. And the kitchen isn't, a, isn't granite or anything like that. And these, these are original cabinets that were just painted and everything. This is how we bought the house. And then here's your master bedroom, a lot bigger. You don't have bolted ceilings, but it is a lot bigger. And then you have 
more windows. Let me just try to get to the master restroom. Uh, oh, there it is. So this is the master restroom. So it is a lot bigger, right? And it's a five piece. And so that does add more value. So I see that it, sh it should be more than what that one's priced based on that. How much more? That's, you know, that's where we kind of have to kind of do some some research to see if we can find some other houses that are more similar to this. And we will, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open the search up. But this, we're comparing that house to this house here, right? So there's your your uh, family room with the, with the fireplace and the brick and everything. And then you have a lower le level down there. So you have a, a level upstairs, there's your, your kitchen and here's your, your family room. Then you down there, you have two other bedrooms with a full restroom and the utility room. And another, and the laundry room that's down there too. So, this is, um, I don't know why they took pictures with the lights off, but they did. Uh, and then, then you have the backyard here with the deck. So we're comparing that that house to this house here. So there are some differences and it's maybe there's some more value in the other house, but we're, we're getting an idea from this one. So if we go to the next house, I'm gonna go to just the next house here, start looking at this house. It's another ranch style home, right? Ranch style home with a finished basement. So. So you come into this one, looks like the flooring's a new flooring. You have, looks like they might've they might painted it. There's your living room, nice bell window. This should be your, one of the bedrooms upstairs. That's your full restroom upstairs. It looks, that is for mica. Original cabinets down there, they might've just painted it. And um, that's original tile on the full, on the on the shower. And I think the flooring itself is still vinyl from the picture that I saw. So there's your kitchen. You don't really get a good view of the kitchen from here, but we should have another picture of it. This should this is the living room. There's your master bedroom through that door. We'll see how the master bedroom looks. That's going down to the basement. There's your kitchen. Looks like it's original cabinets. Looks like you have Formica countertop. I don't think that's granite. Or maybe it is granite. Oh yeah, it is granite. So you have a granite countertop and these cabinets looks like they just painted them and installed new handles. It looks nice. Stainless steel appliances, your flooring all, all through the to the main kitchen there. You have new light fixtures as well, as you can see, all recessed lighting, all those little things, they do count when it comes down to adding value to the house. New light, new uh, ceiling fan there. This is a master bedroom. Let's see the master bedroom restroom so there's your this is a restroom there so as you can see there's your walk-in closet there's your restroom the restroom is just a small restroom with a with a stand-up shower right it's not a five piece at all yeah that's your that's this is your whole master bedroom sorry that master restroom and this you see you have the the glass doors it is nice you know the tiles original tile you can you can tell from that they, they did update the the uh the vanity that I think that might be quartz and then um, that's a new mirror new and a new light fixture there too. So they added a couple of things here. This is, I guess, the other restroom and then in the basement. Yeah, now we're in the basement. So here's your basement. It's a nice fireplace. Looks like they have fresh carpet down here. Can't tell if it's new, but it's definitely uh, clean. And then you can probably have, you should have two other bedrooms down here. So this is one of the bedrooms, I'm assuming they turned into an office. Yeah, it's a bedroom. And there's your other bedroom down there. So you have two big bedrooms in the basement. Now, when it comes down to like below grade bedrooms, they don't count as much as above grade bedrooms, okay? Everything in the basement is valued less than everything above ground. And this is just what, this is just a part of the, the formula for the appraisers, okay? The house that we were list that we listed, they um, it was a, a buy level, so the lower level wasn't actually fully submerged in the in the ground. It was only halfway in the ground, but it's still considered below grade, and so therefore the two bedrooms and the restroom down there didn't add as much value than the two bedrooms and the restroom on the on the upper level since that was above grade, and so this is the kind of things that we're we're looking at now. We didn't have to look at it before, but now we have to because these these appraisers, that's how they're looking at these things. And it's getting kind of a thing. So it's, it's annoying. It's just uh, us adjusting the way we 
we value our homes now because we have to be a bit more careful with that, okay? So if you actually look at this right here, um, this is this value right here, $198. This is per square foot. So this is the value per square foot for this house, right? And this one did sell, right? So it looks like if I scroll all the way to the bottom, you can kind of get some information about it down here. So it got listed on the, on the 1st of February of 2023. It went under contract on the 1st of June. So it was on the market for a couple of months before I actually went under contract, right? And it, it closed on the 30th of June. There were, the list price was 446. They sold at 446. And the, the original price was 475. And it was about 46 days in the market before it went under contract. All that information is down here. So it's, it's, that is useful because this gives you an idea how long it will take to, for it to sell, right? If I go to the, the previous house, the previous house got listed on the 5th of June, went under contract on the 25th of August. So it was, it says right here 20 days, 21 days on the market before it went under contract, um, which is that 21 days? I don't think it is, but anyways. And it said it sold on the 31st. It was list, got listed at 4, 460 and it, it sold at 455, right? So in 20 days, that's not a long time, but that is kind of weird because it said list at 6, 605. Maybe it didn't really go live until after, but um, it went under contract on the, or here, under contract date, 0802-2023, pending date. I don't know why they're different. It shouldn't be different, but it is what it is with these with this data. So it gives you an idea. This is at 446. So let's look at the third one here. Another ranch style home. Um, 435. Let me just look down here really quick. So they listed it on the 31st of May. And they looks like they went under contract on the 17th of June. So 17 days in the market. That's still pretty fast. 435. And then sold at 435. Yeah. So, so this one here is a five bedroom, three bath, just like the other one. And so ranch style so you have the all the that brick exterior which i love you don't see those anymore i'm really surprised that they they there was one like this in this area then you get into the home looks like it has new flooring new light fixtures up there whoops there's a the living room dining area with a fireplace there's your kitchen, not very open, but there's your kitchen in there. It's a, it's a good size. I know those kitchens, they're, they're decent. They have it open here with a little bar, which is nice. Granite countertop, and you have your cabinets, and you have a pantry right here, little bell window there, which is which is nice for a little breakfast nook. And then you have, this is your master bedroom. Again, these these houses, they though they're the same size, the other house, it feels like it's a bigger house, you know? So this is your new vanity here. I think this is the master bedroom, master bedroom bathroom. Um, that's a bedroom there. That's another bedroom. Oh, this is actually, this is the master right here. So vaulted ceilings, a lot bigger. Then we'll see how the restroom looks right here. So this is the bathroom in the master bedroom. So again, original, looks like an original uh, vanity. You have a, the tub and everything, but that's all original tile too, right? They didn't update that. They just put the floor in. So then here you have the the basement. Again, the carpet looks like it might be new. It looks like they updated the restroom in the basement. That's fresh tile there. You have a new vanity. I can't tell, I can't see the flooring, but that definitely adds some value to the house. Then you have a deck in the backyard, right? And then you have the exterior stuff and the roof. So, so you have the brick in the front. This, this this does add some value to the house, right? Not a ton, but it does add some value. It protects the house a bit more. This brick, it lasts forever. I've seen houses that were built back in the 50s, 60s with, with the masonry. It's, they, they look great, you know? <laughs> they really do. They're, and it's all around the entire home. And they, they're, they're still in great shape. Granite and everything hits this stuff and it just bounces right off. It doesn't even doesn't even phase it at all. And so these are some houses here that we're seeing. This next house here is uh, is active 425. 
So this is the same floor plan as the house that that that's that we're trying to value, right? Look, same exact floor plan. I already know because I know these houses about out there. The double garage, um, and you have the steps going up. Watch, we'll see the interior. So here it is. The, so very similar. It's the exact same setup on the inside as well. So you have the um, and Zulma has the same. Uh, same house, by the way. <laughs> but uh, so you have the, the vinyl flooring here. You do have stainless steel appliances, but these are the original cabinets and original uh, countertop. Um, it looks like they're in decent shape; they're not falling apart. But the colors don't do them any justice. Like the, they're, you know, they're not updated colors at all. So, yeah, they're all in good shape. Nothing wrong with them, but. If you go into this one, I'd be like, you can just paint these things, you know, paint them white, change the countertop. You can even paint the countertops too. And so there's the railing going down. The railing is in good shape as well. It looks nice. You have the sliding, the sliding door to the deck out there. It looks like they have a big backyard. This is the um, the living, the uh, sorry, the the family room down here on the third level. No, they had that, but it doesn't have a, a fireplace. Then you have the sliding doors going out to the yard. You can tell it's a huge backyard. This is the living room here. As you walk in with the bell window there. And then this is the dining area here. Light fixtures and everything have been updated. The carpet, I can't tell. I guess it's new. And that's the front door. This is that angle there. So it's pretty much exactly as you can see here. It is the same floor plan you can tell because you're gonna see how the kitchen looks. But that same angle, we took the same picture, which was right about right there. This is the same picture, right? It looks way better furnished. And the plants, those are real vines, by the way. We still have those in our in our place now. Fedra loves her plants. And so um so right here, you can see that. Again, this is more presentable than this a thousand times more presentable, right? <laughs> and so, but it's a safe floor plan. The carpet's okay and everything. You know, the, the colors, they have the brown with the white. Hey, that it does need a good paint job, at least from, from what I can see here. The paint isn't fresh on the interior. And so, um, so here's one of the bedrooms. I think this is one of the bedrooms in the basement. Another bedroom. This is the master bedroom. There's a ceiling fan. I don't know why they have it on, but you have the French doors, which we had in the other one too. And then you have, this is a master bedroom, right? Double vanity, to five piece. This is the exact same setup, like exact same setup. And so it's interesting because just looking at this house, I mean, it's not in bad shape, but man, the price difference, right? And it just, you do need to paint it and everything. The doors are in good shape. There's nothing really wrong with this house at all. You know, that's the the bed, the bathroom on the, on the lower level. And then you have the backyard. We also had a deck right there, too, with a little patio and a big backyard. That's massive. Yeah, that's a pain in the ass to cut. Trust me, I hated cutting the grass. And so, um, and then the exterior, it looks like it needs to be painted. I can't tell how the roof is, you know. But for us, we our, the exterior was already painted, and the roof was good, so... There was a lot of stuff. Plus, we 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 sold when the house when the when the markets when the the prices in the houses were super high. The the cement's cracked here. Doesn't doesn't take value from the house not much, but it's all about pre presentation. You know, this house is not presented nicely at all. You know, and so it's just they should have maybe done a better job cleaning. Maybe then I don't know something. But it's just, it, it's not presented nicely at all, right? And the flooring here, the vinyl flooring isn't nice. Obviously, the flooring here is way nicer than, than the flooring there. Uh, so that does add some value. But look at the price, though. The price is at $425, you know? And then with good to Zillow, we're looking at the value of this house being between $456 to $504. So you see the difference there? If we ended up listing this at, at 480, I think we'd have a problem getting it valued at 480 personally. And so I think 450 is, is, is a better value for this house now to actually sell it and get it appraised at that value. 
based on what I'm seeing, right? Because this is four twenty-five. You put another twenty-five thousand dollars into this house. You, this house would be beautiful, right? Paint the exterior, paint the interior, maybe uh, paint the cabinets, do whatever else, change the flooring. If the carpet needs to be replaced, changing that, and then you have a you have a great looking house, right? Um, so, again. Zillow, I like looking at it, but it's it's not, don't rely on it because you start looking at this stuff, looking at these price ranges, and you're like, dude, this, this nowhere near that, right? I mean, if the highest one is at 455, and here's this one, it's pending at 425, and it took four days to go under contract, which is fast, by the way, right here, four days, right? They listed it at 823, and the pending date, uh, 827. So they should be closing sometime soon. It looks like it's a little maybe, yeah, they should be closing by by the end of this month. And so, and the 425, it went under contract super fast. This is another ranch style home. Now, if you're not convinced, then we go back to the criteria. To go back to criteria, just to understand how to use the mechanics of these things, there's criteria right there. So I click on this and I go back here and I can start adjusting things, right? What can I adjust? Is a question here. Well, um, pretty much the, the year built, I can go, if I want to go up to 2015 to see what happens there. It didn't change anything for me. I added five more years to it. The square footage, I wouldn't change. You have the bedrooms. I can go four to five bedrooms. I know it's going to change it. I have eight, eight now in the bottom. And I could probably extend maybe... 120 days to see if that brings anything. It didn't change anything either. And this is only, I did it for the sold right here. I went into 120 days as opposed to 90 days. And it didn't change anything. The other thing we can change, what I want to change is this, the mileage, right? That's what I want to change. But I'm not sure how these appraisers are going to do it, but I'm going to go a half a mile bigger, further out. So there we go. I go up to 10 now, right? Now let's see what these 10 give me, right? Maybe, maybe, It'll change it for me. Now I clicked on results and it brought me here. Now if I want to go back to the list, I need to I need to click right here on this drop menu that says display, and I just go to single line and then it gives me the single line setup. Right now let's look at these prices here with the with the full ten. On the high side now I'm seeing four seventy five. Same zip code eight zero nine two five. This is two point three miles from the from that property. Right. So 475 and then 455, and then it goes down from there. So on the high side for 475, let's look at this one now. Another ranch style home. I'm, I'm trying to find the house that's similar to, that has the same floor plan as, as one we're trying to list, but it's it's okay. You know, if I have to work off of these, then I'll work off of these just to look at it. So here's this one. There's your living room, kitchen dining area so you have an island there granite countertops looks like they this that's a custom little shelf there area there that they built with some more cabinets and countertop there and so that's how this is set up you know voltage ceilings looks nice you know you have some updated light fixtures this light fixture here with the brown it looks like it's one of the original ones it doesn't look old it doesn't look bad but you see how all these are like silver, right? And so there's that. That's the. And then you have the cabinets. Cabinets, you can see they're worn out. You have this green color there, which is just weird, you know. Um, I'm not sure how these look, but you know they are the 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 bigger cabinets, which is pretty nice. Counter, you have the granite countertop. You know, I think it's just a little paint job on the on the cabinets so will look nice. The doors look good everything else looks fine looks like the carpet is brand new the doors are in good shape the closets are in good shape this is your restroom nice nice tile there looks like you might have a ceramic in the flooring too this looks like the original vanity you have a weird blue color on the other wall here which is strange trying to make it look like the ocean or something and then you have um you should be going this should be your master bedroom so you don't have carpet in the master bedroom you have the panel flooring, bolted ceilings, you have your ceiling fan, and then you come out and there's your, your restroom. Looks like it's gonna be a five piece. Yep, double vanity, it has a big walk-in closet, looks like it has some custom shelves and drawers there. 
Here's your five piece. You have your tub, your shower, your two vanities, and then you have the toilet on the other side of this half hole right there, right? So nice. It is a nice, actually, nice restroom. And there's your here's your laundry room that goes to the to the garage. And then here you have your your basement recess lighting. A lot of light going in there. You have your fresh carpet. Looks like they might have painted down here too. The doors are in good shape. This this house is nice. It really is. You know, it might be the original vanity, but it's still good shape. You have the 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 tile on the, on the shower as well, which is in really good shape. And you probably have it on the floor as well. And then the other two bedrooms. And then there's your your uh, utility room backyard. Cool. So this is this is a nice one, four seventy five. Now at 475, this is a ranch style home. Ranch style homes tend to sell for more because they're less ranch style homes. You have more two-story houses than you have ranch style homes, by the way. Okay. And so the fact that you have less ranch style homes actually brings up value to these, these houses too. If I go down here, this house was on the market for 32 days before it went under contract. They listed it on July 9th. They went under contract on the 10th of August. They closed on the 20th of September. I guess it was like, there must've been a delay or something with the closing. But anyways, they got it closed. At, they were listed at 475. They dropped the price of 465. They closed it at 475. Now, this is not a bad one. Concessions was $10,000. You can see it right here. Concessions, right there, $10,000. Pink Realty. You can see this the Asian, the agent's name there too, and all that stuff, right? And Fedra is in direct competition with Pink Realty. <laughs> so it's just kind of funny. But anyways, so this is this is one right here. But the truth is, I don't think this this one here will support us to list this house at 475 personally, because it is a different type of style home. This is a four-level house. Hey, maybe these have more value, but according to what I'm seeing, they really don't, right? And so I'm still thinking maybe 460. 465 would probably be the highest I would go with that house just because, again, you don't want to overprice your homes because these 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 appraisers are coming they're coming pretty tough. And and I, I don't feel like we have enough properties here to really go off of to really give us a good idea of uh, what to list it. And especially if, we're, if I'm trying to stay within two and a half miles, right? And so 475, 455, 455, yeah. So I would probably go on the high end, maybe four, 460, 465, you know? Here's another house here. This one, this is in Fountain, not too far from there. So I only went two and a half miles and they got me into Fountain. That's that, that house is in Colorado Springs, but it's not too far from where it is. Then this house has a weird color. And then, um, but it looks like it's a, it's a, it is a, a ranch style with a walkout basement. You know, nice house, really is actually pretty good looking, pretty, pretty good looking house. Cat, the cabinets, decent color, and then they're in good shape. It's all original stuff, nothing new, but they are in good shape. Stainless steel appliances, and you have a gas stove, panel flooring there. There's your little dining area. Yeah, and so this one sold. We see it was on the market for four days. Damn, man. Crazy, actually, I guess 14 days. And then 455, 455, looks like this one is, actually, oh, sorry. sorry, yeah, it's under contract currently. Gotcha. So it hasn't closed yet. But yeah, that's that's pretty quick for it to go under contract. And this is up in, in uh, 455, North, Colorado, North Fountain, which is right next to Colorado Springs. And so that's how, that's how I would go off of this one here. Now, what, what gives it value and stuff to the house and how much is the price? I can send you a list of those things, cover every one of those things right now. It wouldn't make any sense. I do have a list of, of those and I'll, I'll email it to you guys. And um, like a garage, $10,000, an extra bedroom. If you're going from three bedrooms to four bedrooms, it could be another $10,000. If you're going from five bedrooms to six bedrooms, you don't really add much. You don't really add another $10,000 there. You know, it's probably going to be less. It's probably going to be closer to five, five thousand. Another, another restroom. Going from one restroom to two restrooms adds more value than going from three restrooms to four restrooms. Okay, 
It's not like every restroom is always going to add a set amount of value. And it really depends on, on the demand, right? Like going from a two bedroom house to a three bedroom house, the price increase is significant because there's a more there's more demand for a three bedroom house than there is for a two bedroom house, even though it's just one bedroom more. And so the price difference there could be more than going from a three bedroom to a four bedroom, right? You could probably add another twenty thousand dollars to the value of the home going from two to three, and then from going three to four, you're probably going to be adding closer to ten thousand dollar value, as opposed to another twenty thousand dollar value. Now, is there more demand for a four bedroom? Yeah, there is, but it isn't like a crazy. Is is not this is not as significant as it is going from a two bedroom to a three bedroom. Okay, and so that's a couple of things there. So you'll notice a two bedroom house and everything. I found one in in uh, in in Pueblo. It's a two bedroom house with an unfinished basement ranch style. Uh, it's at three hundred and thirty thousand. If they had a three bedroom, it probably sell it for for 350 to even to like to to 375 just to be just to be honest with you guys at, in Pueblo because this was a nice house not an old house and it was in great shape and um but the only reason that they can they can't sell it for more than like 330,000 is because it only has two bedrooms right and and it has two bathrooms as well one in the master and then one on in the main hallway and so and those those are a couple of things that kind of like have a significant bumps on the on the price going from two from two to three going from a one bathroom to two bathrooms it's a significant bump as well. There's more demand for two bathrooms than there is for one bathroom, especially if you have a family of like four living in a house and one with one bathroom. That's tough. That really is. You know, some people have to go outside to go go to the restroom. Um, so. That's just those are a couple of things to kind of note there for you guys. But I'll send you a list of the, of the prices that I have for. I know I have it in here somewhere. So for the prices for the for adding things, um, so you you get an idea of what that is. Now don't stress out too much on these things. Really don't because I I'll, I'll, I'll always help you when it comes down to this stuff. You're not going to do anything by yourself until you get more and more comfortable pricing these things. Okay. And so that's one thing for sure. Just know that. And so, uh, but when it comes down to these things, I think it's just, I, my advice, just be more conservative, right? What I mean by that, like try to stay within two miles, you know, uh, on the, when it comes down to the, to the radius, um, try to make sure that these things are like exact when it comes down to, uh, like the amount of bedrooms and bathrooms and everything. If you have to like, uh, adjust because you're not getting any results then okay adjust say for instance you can't find anything with three bath three bathrooms then i'd go from two to three bathrooms and this will change it or maybe not change it yeah it didn't change it i went from two to three bathrooms and didn't change it it's still 10 uh the garage the square footage you can adjust the the year the square footage you can you can stretch it out to 250 you know, I went plus or minus 200 square feet. You can go plus or minus 250 square feet to see what pops up there. So if I go to 50 there, and then I go 50 there, see what pops up. Because, you know, even small changes can, can adjust it. See, I, I went from 10 to 12 now, okay? So I can see what those other two pop gave me. Go here, single line, and then look. There, here's a house for 480, right? It's a two two story home. I'm not sure if it has a basement, but we'll see right now. This is this has four bedrooms, three baths, 2,292 square feet, right? Two car garage, built in 2015, right? So this is a little newer than than the other one. So if I if I go to the the pictures here, I can kind of look at it. This house obviously is going to be fairly Fairly new. That's your restroom, main level. Main level. This is uh, looks like an office on the main level. The flooring is nice panel flooring. Looks like it has fresh carpet going up in the stairs. You have the stone on around the fireplace. Nice, nice mantle and everything. Really nice. It looks like looks like this one is definitely staged. They paid the three thousand dollars a month to get it staged. And so um, here's your open kitchen, open concept. Those cabinets look. Man, they look brand new. You have granite countertop, granite countertop, new cabinets, beautiful cabinets, by the way. And then you have a little bit of crown molding up there, new light fixtures, 
So does, does the house you're trying to list look like this? No, it doesn't, right? It doesn't have the updated kitchen. It doesn't have granite countertops. And so for me to list it at 480, I already know for a fact is that you can't even, I can't list it at 480. I can't. If, if this one sold at 480 and I try to go try to list this one at 480, even though it's a nice house and it's presented nicely, but the, the kitchen isn't updated. So the kitchen's still original cabinets, it's just been painted. It's still original countertop that's just only painted as well. Um, I can't I can't support the 480 price. And so I already know that's that's nowhere near that, especially compared to this one here, compared to this house, right? The pantry has a nice little door there. Yeah, this is this is a really nice kitchen. And it's it's a good size too. It's actually it's not small. There's actually some of these are very narrow when you have these setups, like this floor plan, but this is not narrow at all. This is actually very wide with a fireplace too. So here's your here's your master bedroom. Let's look at this this bathroom here. So a good size master bedroom. You're going into the to the restroom. Look at that, right? That's all updated tile, all updated. Five piece, just like the other one, but everything on on this house <laughs> is still the original stuff, just painted. That's all that it is. And so if I go at 480, you go under contract at 480, and then your the appraiser's looking at properties, there's no way in hell they're gonna support that price. You know, no way in hell. Look at the window there and everything. This is nice, this is a nice as a uh, restroom. Yeah. Granite countertop in the restroom too, big walk-in closet. Then you have your other bedrooms. And so again, this is what you're doing when you're when you're running a CMA. The more you get comfortable with the market, the the, the more the easier it becomes. You know, you, you know, you hear a zip code, you have an idea of what the price is in that zip code. That's that's called experience. Okay. But you build yourself up to that level. And CMAs, this is how you want to run them. You want to look at the data. Okay, you want to look at the prices, you want to look at the pictures and everything. We were able to sell 480 because we sold back at the end of 2021 at the peak of the market. The market started dropping right around May of 2022. Okay, and so that's when we were able to sell it at this price and support it with the uh, with 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 the appraisal as well. Okay, these appraisers were basically passing any price back then. You know, but things have changed. So. I know that was a lot. I just wanted to cover all those all those details with you guys as much as I possibly can. Uh, any questions about how to run this stuff and how to look how to look this stuff up before I get into the next one? That was about an hour. Yeah. Um, okay, let me let me do this. Let me stop sharing. Let me stop recording for a second.